So let's begin with the controversial take. I feel like I am a self-taught software developer, even though I did my computer science from a decent college. And I've been able to have a decent monetary outcome. But behind all the fanciness that you see, there's a hard hitting truth that most self-taught developers fail. Look at this article. It says the failure rate of a self-taught software developer is more than 50%. I would argue the number is closer to 90%. But why do they fail? What do they do wrong? And how was I able to become the top 1% self-taught developer? It's something we'll discuss today. Let's get into the video. Point number one, lack of a structured plan. Most people, when they're getting into this field, have heard of just two things, either data structures and algorithms and HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Our school curriculum sort of heavily focuses on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So it feels like this is how websites are made in the real world, but that's not the case. This is something you need to be very careful about before you start. Make sure you have a structured learning path on whatever you want to learn. You could learn game development, web development, cybersecurity, data structures and algorithm. You could have the goal of getting a job at the very end, but it's very important to have a structured plan of what you're going to learn. Usually any good technology like web development, front and back and Android should not take more than three to six months to at least understand the basics of it as long as you're doing the right things. So make sure you're following the right set of roadmaps. Make sure you're talking to someone who's working in the industry and understanding what exactly is being used so you can structure your learning according to that. Number two, tutorial hell. Make sure you don't follow tutorials on YouTube. He said after making three tutorials on YouTube last week. The problem with tutorials is that you're trying to basically copy paste someone that works for conventional jobs. You can understand how to make coffee by looking at someone else. You can't really understand how to code. You're, you're stuck in sort of revised mode. You're stuck in, you know, learning uh, physics for solving problem for an examination, but that's not how computer science works. Computer science has various variations of things that you have to do once you actually start working. So going through a tutorial will not tingle the right set of neurons in your brain, which basically means you won't understand how things are happening under the hood. Better way to say this is that you won't be able to structure how to code in the future for other use cases if you are just following someone line to line. Anyone, a five-year-old can do that, right? They can look at a YouTube video and whatever buttons the other person is pressing, I can press those. By the end of it, I can have a very fancy outcome like a website, but that doesn't mean I've really learned how to build websites. I've learned how to build that specific website in a way that I'm going to forget after two days. So make sure you're not following tutorials. Read through documentation, start GPT, try to, you know, wiggle your hands left, right, and center and try to figure out the solution to the problem yourself. Just ask for problem statement from other people and try to solve real world problems rather than looking at a tutorial. That's a much better way to learn. With that, point number three, the fear of missing out on that magic tutorial. Today, the internet is filled with a lot of content and anytime you feel like you want to learn something new, you might be running behind that one channel or that one video that's going to help you reach excellence in that technology. But the answer is no one can help you reach excellence, only you can. As I said in the last point, just worry about projects, just worry about what you want to build. Look at multiple tutorials that help you reach there, but make sure you're not anchored to one. If tomorrow that video goes away, you should still be able to code that thing. No one is looking at tutorials on their day job when they're solving problems. Everyone is looking at documentation, Googling and asking chat GPT. So those should be the three places where you're spending most of your time rather than spending it on YouTube. Point number four, naysayers and self-doubt. Whenever you tell your friends that you're about to start your coding journey, um, they might pull you down. This happened with me as well. When I was about to start, I was about to join a computer science degree. Someone said, everyone knows HTML, CSS, and JavaScript today. What new will you do? Every like, kid knows HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But as my journey began, I realized there's much more to learn, a lot of things to explore. And like the field is ever growing, at least at the moment. We don't know if AI will take that away. But at the moment, I feel like software development is going to be a pretty lucrative path for the years to come, personal opinion. And, and if that happens, that has happened for the past 15 to 20 years, I want to be at the forefront of technology. Whenever there are 10X and 100X products coming out, be it social media, be it e-commerce, be it digital payments, when Whenever this next 100x cycle comes, I want to be there and I want to be the person that everyone wants to hire or I'll build a business of my own. For that, I need to learn how to code. There will be a bunch of naysayers. Everyone will be like, do this, do that. You stay focused and just spend your time coding rather than worrying about this. Find a community of people who are like you today. Thankfully, a lot of people in India sort of understand the importance of coding and hence there are very strong, solid communities that are trying to learn. Be a part of that community. Everything else will be an outcome. Point number five, overemphasizing on theory. If you're going to be a self-taught developer, most probably the way you've been learning until now is through books. The way our Indian education system is built is that you're incentivized to cram a lot and read a lot of books. You have a very nice outcome by the end of it. Can you get a specific rank in a specific examination? That's how education works in India. That's unfortunately not how coding works. The way to learn coding and the way to implement it in the real world is by actually doing it. So if you have an option of reading a computer network's notebook versus the option of building a website and deploying it to a server in the US and understanding how networking is happening from your machine to that, choose the second option. Another example might be rather than reading a database management book, try to build a pretty scalable database, try to put millions and billions of records in it, try to do queries and see, oh, 
at what time do your queries begin to fail and how can you optimize them work on real world scenarios believe it or not your bookish knowledge will tell you to build the right thing from day zero that is now how the best startups are built the best startups are built in the most scrappy fashion through their journey of startups as more and more people join and the platform scales is when the book is actually referred to and you know small optimizations are made so no one is going to ask you to build the most optimal system on day zero so if you ever have a choice between reading a book and writing some code always prefer writing code only one caveat i'd say here is don't write very basic code after you've written basic code maybe go back to the book and read what advanced things it's discussing for example in case of database management systems um, there's something called normalization that's you know, very theoretical concept that you learn during college in your DBMS course. Try to implement that in your system. Another important concept is indexing. So look at how you can actually build a very big database, try to search on it, see that the query is really so, try to put an index there and then see how the query time goes down. Doing these practical experiments will be super powerful when you join your company. Believe it or not, companies have like dumb developers. Everyone's like sort of learning. And uh, as I said, not the most optimal thing is made on day zero. When there is a production issue one day and you put in that index there, that's when your promotion is waiting on the other side because there are hundred things to there might be a senior engineer in the team but at that time he's busy he's not able to figure things out there is a fire and if you know one of these advanced concepts for example indexing you can really impress everyone around so focus on writing code at the same time don't get stuck in beginner's hell which means don't do very basic things small example don't just stick to html css and javascript to build websites look at what is being used in the industry open an open source project of a company that has raised a lot of money does a lot of profits and read through their code understand how that's happening that's the best way to learn versus reading books with that let's move to the last point which is that tech always runs in Cycles. There are always bull runs, there are bear runs and hiring sort of depends a little bit on that. If you feel that the last 10 years that tech has had, similar innovation is going to come in tech in the next 10 to 15 years. It's a great industry to be in. The path as a self-taught software developer, while it's difficult, is much more rewarding because you learn something that the crowd is not learning right now. In India, if you look at around 90% of engineers are currently very good at data structures and algorithms, not good at practical learning. If you are that self-taught developer, you are disconnected from the crowd. So the things that you're doing are very unique and that differentiates you when you're applying for a job. So just keep your eye on the ball, stay focused and don't be faced by market cycles. Whenever the bull comes, make sure you're well prepared to make a lot of money. When you're in the bear, make sure you're surviving, make sure you have the right set of jobs and don't be faced by market cycles. That's the last advice I'd like to give. With that, let's end the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.